Okay, we are now live at the Driving Sports TV studio in Bellevue, Washington. And I'm going to verify that the uh, live stream is up and going. So everybody just pardon me briefly here. Um, always have to check these things since we don't have a massive crew working on this. And it looks like, yeah, we are up and going. I don't know how many people are going to join us on a Saturday because, well, it's a Saturday. I'm sure a lot of people have other things to do. Uh, where is my live studio? I can't, where did they move that to? Analytics, live dashboard, there we go. Verify that our stream health is looking good. Stream health is looking good. So I'm Ryan Douthit, host of Driving Sports TV. This is my son who's joining us in the stream. Say hey. Hello. Great. So uh, we're going to uh, soon, okay, so if you have seen our channel um, community section recently, you will note that we actually had a, um, uh, we put a poll up recently to ask what kind of a long-term Subaru did we want to have? Did you want to get a Forester or do we want to get a Subaru Onyx XT? Now the re, did I say Forester Onyx? No, uh, Outback Onyx XT. And the reason why we picked those two specific vehicles, specifically the Forester Sport and the Subaru Onyx uh, Outback Onyx XT is that they're both of the models that have the dual range, um, uh, the dual mode, X mode, pardon, it's a Saturday, my brain's a little woo, but anyway, here we all are. Because um, dual mode, X mode is something we wanna spend a lot more time with, we wanna test, uh, and so we're going to uh, do a lot more of that coming up. But, the, uh, but we wanted you guys to uh, join us here in the, the actual build of the car. We are going to build the car I didn't want to do that. What did I just do? <sighs> da, da, da. I'm already in that. Go to the control room. Sometimes, th sometimes this interface just drives me crazy here. Events. Oh, stop that. I am just kind of killing some time here while I'm waiting for everybody to uh, join us. We uh, have a few minutes. Um, as people are coming into the into the stream room here and joining us in the conversation. I'm already streaming now. Uh, I'm not creating a new stream. I just want to go to my current stream. I, seriously. Seriously, this, this is just crazy. Come on, go to my right thing. Ugh, fine. I'm going to go to the old interface because the old interface actually works. Okay, so <laughs> hey, everybody, we got people coming in. Smash the large display, remove CBT, install automatic. Well, that's not exactly what we're doing. What we're looking at today is we're going to go to the Subaru website and configure what we want. Uh, we're going to ask each of you, all you guys, as we're configuring it, what kind of, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. There will be some discussion because I actually have to drive this thing and film with this thing. And so there are some requirements such as absolutely not getting it in black. Black looks great, but I do not want to film a black car. Um, Military green. The, the green is pretty cool, I will admit. So uh, let's get going. I see we have a few people joining us. We've got 25 currently watching us. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us. It's awesome. Uh, just for a brief, brief recap, and we're going to do this probably a couple times before we really get into things here. Uh, I'm Ryan Douthat. I'm the producer and host of Driving Sports TV. Uh, and this is my son who is joining us. And he's got, uh, well, we had a plate full of cookies, but we're now down to one. Um, courtesy of his grandmother. Uh, and uh, we are going to configure the Subaru Outback Onyx XT. We put a poll up, and that poll was legitimate. We were asking, did you want us to get a Forester Sport or a Subaru Outback Onyx XT? Both of them, of course, have the dual mode X mode, and that's what we want in a long-term vehicle. Uh, so let's configure this. Now, I, I do have a, one caveat, is that Subaru may decide that either a, something we ask for isn't available or... They just don't want to give it to us. So this is kind of more of our, we're creating an outline recommendation of what we want and we send it to them and then we see what we get. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, dig in. I would love to do a Crosstrek too, but you know, Crosstrek's gonna get fully revised. Um, I think it's due for at least a mid-cycle refresh pretty soon here. Uh, and it doesn't have dual mode X mode, which is kind of the whole point of what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and switch over into the new multi-view. Hey there, you got comments popping up there on the screen as if you guys can see. 
Uh, and I think we're just going to go ahead and dig into this. So we're on the Subaru Configurator uh, website. Let's get this all configured here. Uh, let me go to... Got to read comments on here. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to navigate to build and price. And then they're probably going to ask us, what car do we want to configure? Uh, we are going to go with a 2020 Outback, thanks to you guys who voted that one over the Forester. And, and let me say this about Forester. Even if you really wanted us to get a Forester, there's always next year, right? Um, I think, I'm pretty sure Forester is due for a mid-cycle refresh next year. So that would actually make it a little bit more relevant. relevant. And hey, we can always have uh, hold out hope for a turbo version, right? Anyway, where are we? Uh, so Onyx XT starts at 34,000, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's click on build and price. Okay, so uh, transmission. Uh, let's put in a dual range automatic uh, with uh, low range and lockers. How does that sound? Yeah. yeah, unfortunately not an option. We have to go with the automatic Lineartronic CVT. So that, <laughs> that is picked. But now, oh, this is the tough one, guys. This is the tough one that I just do not know what color I want to go with. Any of these colors, are, now, whenever I personally buy a car, I always buy silver. And the reason for that is they're fairly easy to keep clean. They look good on film. Uh, they look good in dark environments and light environments. Uh, but uh, we got some colors here to deal with. Um, so. Uh, Automatic green metallic looks good. The blue looks good. Can't do black. Black is completely out. Uh, ice silver metallic. I think that looks kind of nice. The only reason why I wouldn't go with the ice silver metallic is I'm pretty sure that is the Onyx that we reviewed already. So we already have one video with that car color. So I'd kind of like this one to stand out a little bit better. Um, magnetite gray, I got to admit. That looks pretty awesome. Doesn't that, does that one look good? You like that one? Yeah, yeah that looks pretty good. Uh, and then of course, uh, white. If you're into the Stormtrooper look, which I think is, I'm actually okay with the Stormtrooper look. I think that could look really good, especially if you black out the windows and stuff, especially with all those black trim pieces. Oh man. Okay, so what, let me look at what you guys are saying here. Uh, sport grill. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, oh, somebody wants to be reminded what dual mode X mode is. So X mode is an optimization of the traction control system uh, to allow you to have a little bit more wheel spin in certain situations or to redistribute power um, more aggressively so that it's expecting that you're going to get slip and it kind of alters the system to be able to be more optimized for trickier situations than what you would need to do in everyday driving. Uh, basically, it makes it more capable. So, but they added a dual mode, which allows for wheel slip. So the first, the, the one mode version um, allows, basically really makes it so that it'll use the braking ve brake vectoring to, to stop a wheel from spinning and redistribute that power back into the system. Because of course it uses open differentials now. Um, the second mode allows for more wheel spin because sometimes you want more momentum to get out of tricky situations. So um, these two, uh, the Onyx XT is the only way to get an Outback with the dual mode. Uh, and then of course the Forester Sport also has it. But that's why we're going with the Onyx specifically is because it's the one with this feature that we want to do more testing with. Um, that was our suggestion to Subaru. They like the idea, so here we go. Okay, so uh, let's look at the thing. Where are you going? You're going to go get a drink. Okay. <laughs> See what happens. I start explaining X mode and my son just goes, wanders away. Um, I wish they had more colors. The darker colors look better with the plastic cladding. This is true. The gray metallic does look nice. Green metallic. The problem with the green metallic is we're in the Seattle area. And every, it's like, how often do you see a green Outback around here? Once or twice in, in your lifetime. We saw two today. Oh, you weren't with me. Okay. Well, they're a little bit more common. I don't think he's noticed. Um, they're pretty common around here. The one thing I don't know is I don't see a lot of people with the blue one. 
but I don't really see myself driving. A bl not like it matters what I'm driving because it's it's for the show. Uh, the problem with a white car, Paul, um, is the fact that in bright light, it can really throw off exposures. Not so much of a big deal in uh, photography, but when because you have a little bit more leeway to deal with. But with video, sometimes you can get a blown out car when you're just trying to keep the background slightly exposed uh, in particular situations. So I think I would also, I'm going to strike out black. I'm going to strike out white. Those aren't going to work for us. Uh, the blue does pop. I mean, I'm kind of thinking that blue. Anybody want to argue against the blue? Yeah, green. I think green's too common. So I think we need to count that one out. It's like the obvious outback color to get. Um, so that really much narrows us to blue pearl or magnetite gray, I would say. Only because, again, I mean, I would be open to ice silver, but we've already filmed a car that was that color, and I want this one to stand out. Uh, oh, Aldez, you want to know why does your 2020 Crosstrek have gears on the linear tronic transmission? It doesn't. They're fake gears uh, to give you the feeling of shifts. Basically, that's it. Uh, you can also use it for stepping down while going downhill. Uh, I'm going to go with the blue. I think I'm going to go with blue. A lot of people seem to want the blue. I like the blue. Let's go with the blue. Uh, interior, StarTex. There's only one interior. They have the, um, the vegan... Um, I don't mind seeing the cladding, actually. <laughs> um, th yeah. Okay, we're going to go with the blue. I think that that's a done deal. Uh, the interior, you get the star text, which is the vegan um, approved uh, gray fake uh, cladding. Um, so let's look at this. What do we want? Do we want a power moonroof? I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of moonroofs. So they just add weight to the top of the vehicle. They are nice for attaching cameras, though. So I gotta, I gotta get that. Uh, okay, who wants? Can anybody talk me into getting the moonroof? Because I, I just don't really know if I really want a moonroof. Yes, a moonroof. Why, why should I get a moonroof? I mean, other than they look nice, and I can attach cameras to them easily. Uh, good point. Yes, that is true. I mean, we do we do actually light our interiors for the most part, sometimes better than others. Um, but I will agree, it will keep the cabin lighter and it will make it easier to film. So there we go. That was see see how easy I am to get swayed. Uh, we'll get Alan. We'll get to the uh, touch display here shortly. Okay, so we've added a moonroof, and let's see what other options that gives us. Uh, I'm not going to ask for a pair of iPads. We have iPads. <laughs> I, my wife would actually really like a CD player. Uh, it's not for her, obviously. This is, this is for the show. Uh, but we do take vehicles on road trips, and when you do road trips, sometimes that means books on tape. Uh, but I, boy, three hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. I think. Um, stick your tongue out like a dog. Nice. <laughs> See, somebody gave me a legitimate reason. Natural light. See, that that's a good one. Um, Rockford Fosgate audio upgrade. I mean, I don't personally care, but actually I might. I could do something on the sound system. So let's go ahead and upgrade that. Wireless charger. You know, I uh, since I've gone to an I, iPhone Pro, uh, yeah, wireless charger I think is, is where it's at. So Aldez, you keep asking about the, uh, the, the speeds. It's still a CVT but uh, it will emulate gears. And when it's emulating gears, um, it just depends on how you're driving as to which gears you're getting into. Uh, you can use your stick. I can't remember if it's stick or if it's pedal. Yeah, the wireless charger, um, they don't do wireless CarPlay. So far, only BMW does that. Oh, and I'm not sure if everybody caught the news. Why does it sound like I have an Outback idling in the background? <laughs> Is that your tummy? <laughs> it's probably the fans on the gear that we have. Uh, what am I saying with this? Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, BMW finally dropped the annual fee. They were charging people like 80 bucks a year to have wireless CarPlay. They finally dropped that. Uh, and uh, anyway, here nor there, moving on. Uh, let's see. So wireless charger. Let me go pop back over here, make sure we can still see. Oh, uh, actually, let's go to let's go to more than just high there. I think I can. Oh, there we go. 
I forgot I can do this. This is awesome. Yes, moonroof. Natural light, light for filming. I forgot I can totally um, uh, get this, but which way is it? Is that the most paddles? Okay, so now we now we got this this setup going here, so you can actually see some of the comments on the screen. Um, I like it. Alan's like the only guy who actually has like a proper picture for his uh, avatar there. Oh, anyway, I'm getting distracted. So, so far we've picked a wireless charger. What are we doing price-wise here? So far we're up to $38,000. Oh, by the way, we just filmed the uh, two days ago. What was that rig, I, I got the RAV4? Oh yeah, it was the RAV4 um, TRD off-road edition. Came with all-terrain tires and rally bred shocks, which actually for those of you who follow the US Rally Series, Toyota says that the shocks they put on the TRD off-road were derived from what they learned from the RAV4 that they ran in the US Rally Series. You remember they ran that one uh, for a while? Actually, I don't. I haven't been following US Rally this year. I don't know if it's still running or not. Can anybody tell me if that one's still running? Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? If your phone has a case, it won't fit in the wireless charging slot. Oh, really? That's interesting i have a very slight case um you can see that this is this is mine i'm going with the uh is this the otter case i think oh this is spec it's a spec case my previous case was an otter case but you don't think this will fit in the um in the wireless charging because if it doesn't there's no reason for me to add that because this is as thin as it gets and i'd be foolish to run without a case Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, let me know about that case if you think that it'll work for me or not, but uh, it would be uh, interesting. Oh, thanks, Russ. Okay, let's look at comfort and convenience. I'm going to go ahead and leave that wireless charger on there for right now. Uh, I do not need a cup. Oh, I do like the auto dimming mirrors. Oh, it comes standard with it. Cargo comfort. Uh, cargo net, don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Cargo tray, don't want that. Actually, does it have the mud mat standard? I can't quite tell. Anybody know if those mud mats come standard or is that? Oh, whatever. The, oh, it does. It comes standard in the Onyx. Okay, I see that. It was selected. Uh, oh, hello. Remote engine starter push start. I like the remote engine starter. I think that's cool. You know, so we can be inside, turn it on, and, and heat it up. Uh, where was that? I have to say that this interface for me for picking up comments out of uh, in the live stream is not the easiest thing to read. The wireless charging. Is, okay, so uh, more comments on the wireless charging. It's slow, and it heats the phone up. I've noticed that actually in a couple... Um, Things. Uh, oh, Don, quick question here. Don Carlos says that wireless charging does not work with the case. Um, the question I have with that is, do you have a case that is wireless charging approved? Because that actually said that on this one. So, or do you have just a, a generic case? I think that kind of matters whether or not it should work. Because this works in every other wireless charger I've used. I just used it in the TRD, uh, the BMW, uh, both of those it works. So I'm just curious if whether or not this is a Subaru-specific thing or a case-specific thing. Maybe, Don, if you can give us some more info about what kind of case you're using. Just a generic case. Yeah, it's possible. Some of the generic cases don't allow for wireless charging. I do know that. Um, yeah, remote engine starter is not standard. I see that here, which is kind of... It's, uh, wow, 463 bucks, but I'm going to go ahead and add it because I really think that a remote starter is cool. Uh, I hate use so Benjamin points out a good thing that I could just use the My Subaru app to start the car. I hate fumbling with my, I feel like fumbling with so many other things already on my phone. I mean, I have to manage cameras, uh, locations. I, I, I do waiver I, I don't know i just feel like i'm always doing production stuff with my phone so i try to limit what i need to do anything else with it um so i don't always do that Let's see what else we got there you don't need a remote start yeah so that's a good point 
So what do you guys think? Should we get, should we um, do, came with my car and I'm glad I don't think you use it. Uh, do you th do you guys think that we should do um, remote start or just use Starlink? I mean, because yeah, I know that's a good point. Uh, Apple CarPlay. Um, let me see if I can pop this back there. Sorry, I'm kind of juggling a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of comments in here. So this is a very good point right here. If you're using Apple CarPlay, you need to connect via wire anyway, which I do. So. Mm. Although sometimes I forget my cable, and then I can always play music over wi uh, over Bluetooth, but then I have no means of charging. So that's kind of the only use case where the wireless charger, I think, actually makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. I mean, that's a good point. There's no there's no wireless car play. Might as well not add that. Uh, it doesn't really add anything to our testing anyway. It's not like that's a feature we're going to really need. Um, okay, moonroof air deflector. I think I'll pass. <laughs> have you seen those? What do you think of those? That when you, when you see little plastic bits attached to people's cars? No. No? Okay. No. My son says no, so that's that's out of the question. Um, yeah, we're just going to go with the app. Starlink. I see everybody's saying use Starlink. By the way, I haven't even tried Starlink in probably one to two years because the first version of it was so awful, it would crash my phone every single time I used it. But since you guys are saying we should use it, it sounds like um, they've actually like fixed some of the problems, possibly. I mean, everybody is saying Starlink here, Starlink, Starlink, Starlink. Go for the app, man. Is the, uh, what's that? So you think, uh, no, you have to have the, um, you have to have it enabled. I mean, there ha there's a feature you have to add to have the remote start. I don't think it's on the standard um, setup. Okay, so I, I think it's been settled. We we are going to go with Starlink. Um, okay, so I'm not going to add the remote start. We'll just use Starlink, and we'll see how that lasts uh, for us. I don't think I'm going to get their their windshield because I want to get the one with cars that has the big eyes on it. No, just kidding. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> We're not going to be those guys. No. Um, ooh, sun second row sunshade. Do you want to weigh in on this one? You used to like them. It's not for the show, but you know I could throw it in. No, you, well unless you really really want it, I have no reason to throw it in. Okay, I, I think no on this on the sunshade. Uh, so we're gonna pass on that. Let's look at security. <sighs> All weather floor liners, heck yeah. Love me some floor liners. Auto dimming exterior mirror with mirror with approach light. It's kind of funny. I thought that that was just standard. I guess maybe that's standard on the upper end trims. Get the sunshade. I'm not getting the sunshade, Steve. I live in the Northwest. It's sunny four days a year. <laughs> if I could get a rain shade, that would be nice. Although probably, oh, uh, you're saying you get a four month trial for Starlink. I'll probably just have them compass on it. It'll last nicely. You know, you're out of the shot over there. Are you just going to stand? What are you doing? You're, you're just moving? You're kind of moving the shots, so you're going to be, like, over my shoulder now? Oh, you want to see the computer. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Here, I'll move over this way a little bit. You can kind of squeegee in here. We're trying to keep the shot a little tight. Um, there. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, this is a big question for me. Auto-dimming exterior mirrors with approach light. Is that something you guys actually, like, look for? I mean, I, I kind of like it, but it's... It is a good security feature. Oh. Okay, just to rewind a little bit, Tom is saying that I should get the sunshade. I, I should just rewind. I've never had a sunshade in my life. I mean, Seattle, just there's no need to have a sunshade around here. It just doesn't get hot enough or warm enough for longer periods of time. It's something I would honestly, if I got it, I would lose it probably immediately. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say no on the sunshade. There's just nothing I could really do with that. I, I mean, even testing it, I'm not sure. Although testing it, if I'm out in the middle of nowhere camping, it would be kind of nice to have a sunshade, I guess. I don't know. I just feel like it's one more thing that I'm going to lose. And then when they get the car back, they'll be like, uh, excuse me, where's the sunshade? Auto-dimming mirror. Well, I already have the auto-dimming rear mirror. Do you think exterior mirrors auto-dimming? 
let's look at the details on this. Enhance nighttime safety by the auto dimming exteriors with approach light. Yes, yes. Lights must see real logo. Ooh. Toward the right during nighttime drive exterior auto dimming mirror. That's kind of cool. I think that that yeah, let's let's do that. I didn't know that that was uh, an option on there. We'll go ahead and throw that in. We're keeping it under 40 so far. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the auto dimming mirrors. I agree. That's kind of why I, I, I went for that, not really for the, the the puddle lights. Although, actually, being in the Northwest, it is important to see if you're about to step in a puddle, yeah. especially with the weather we've had lately. I have a. Um, I recently had a swimming pool added to the basement of my house. No, I did not ask for it to be there. It just moved in overnight because we've had record rainfall for the last five or six days. I mean, has, has it, it hasn't stopped raining in like a week, right? It rained so much they delayed school by two hours on Friday, yep. right? It's good. <laughs> you know you need to make those days up, right? Yeah. Well, the half days, oh, I guess half day you don't make up technically. Okay, we're gonna g getting caught up here on some of the comments because there are so many comments. Oh, Eastern Oregon got hit by the rain, huh? Wow. Yeah, it's just so much rain. Popular package one. I didn't see... Um, here, let me put this comment up here. Oh, come on, the comment hasn't... Okay, it hasn't refreshed yet. Once it refreshed, I'll throw it up. But um, I didn't see a popular package. This this being the Onyx, it has some slightly different. So I only have one package option. Uh, what else was in that? So this one package option includes the power moonroof, navigation, because I think the Onyx already comes with the big screen anyway. So that's not a, a, a an addition. It just adds navigation to it. And then the reverse auto braking. That's it for the Onyx package. Um... Yeah, so that's that one. I think that's for the uh, different trim level. Uh, anyway, let's scroll back down here and see what we got. Battery warmer. We're really not that cold here. I don't have to worry about it. I, body side molding. I thought it came with body. Oh, oh, it's those bars. No, I don't like those. I don't want those. Ooh, differential underguard. Can anybody comment on the quality of the differential underguard? I've never um, seen the Subaru ones. Um, to answer PP's question here, uh, we'll digress for just a brief moment. Subaru already has a plug-in electric hybrid uh, Crosstrek, which we actually have a review on, um, but they don't have anything else in the U.S. Over in Japan and the U.K., they have a Forester that is a hybrid, uh, but I think that we won't see that in the U.S. until we get a next generation um, revision of that plug-in electric. Um, I would expect that the Forester would probably be next in line because A, they've already built one, and B, it is one of their most popular models. And I think it also makes sense because it has so much cargo room, you could actually lose a little and still have a lot of cargo room. Um, oh, well, okay, popular packages. Yeah, well, we're not dealing with the dealer here. We're just basically submitting an order directly to Subaru, and in theory, they're going to build what we want and send it to us. So the dealers are out of the loop on these ones. Anyway, let's talk about this differential underguard. Um, I mean, I've had, I've had like, you know, the one from um, Primitive, and that was really good. This one looks a lot chintzier than the Primitive one. Um, you know you're being picked up on camp on the microphone when you do that. Yeah. It's going to make weird snorting noises. Make a so this is the one thing he needs to learn, that if you're going to do something on camera, do it big, do it bold. Okay, give me, give me your best snorting noise right now. <laughs> there you go. If you want to make snorting noises, make real snorting noise. Don't just make little things in the background or people are going to think something's wrong with their speakers. Okay. <laughs> um... Okay, let's catch up where we I got I got totally distracted here. Uh, twenty thirty five Subaru full electric. Yeah, Subaru is gonna every all automakers are going electric eventually. It's just a matter of how long we're taking. Um, I am gonna go with some all terrain tires later. Uh, I'm gonna talk to some tire companies and see what they can send us. But uh, I know out of the gate we can't get any uh, here. Uh, let's see, catching up on comments. Eight gears or paddle shift, I'm on the highway and shift into sport mode. That's when at eight speed. But it's still a CVT. It, it, even though, though it does have stepped gears, it's still a CVT. It's just emulating stepped gears. That's something people need to understand. Uh, get white with the turbo. 
Yeah, I just, it, the whole photo thing is why I'm not getting white. We're going with blue. Okay, so let's talk this differential. Anybody have any strong opinions about that diff cover? Uh, Alan, longtime viewer. Um, yeah, I, it seems like nobody has experience with this. I think we should uh, go ahead and go with it because, A, I didn't even know they offered one. I'm, it's great they do, uh, but it would be interesting to see if it actually does anything valuable. Uh, severe weather companion, I can say that shovel that they're showing there, that's not going to do anything. You are going to be miserable at life if that's the shovel you need to dig yourself out of severe weather. So I am going to move along with that. Door scuff protectors. You wouldn't know anything about scuffing doors, would you? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, engine block heater. Don't oh, hey, look at that. They offer an engine underguard aluminum piece. Oh, sorry, Paul, over at Primitive. I guess manufacturer is now adding that. I'm definitely adding that to the, to the product there. Let's see if they have a picture of it uh, installed. Durable engine underguard. I, I can just see the PR people at Subaru are going to be like, oh, of course, Ryan added the, en the engine underguard piece. Of course. And they'll be like, please, please don't break our car. <laughs> Anyway, it replaces the original plastic undercover while maintaining easy access for the oil drain plug, which is the important one uh, for proper turbo. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Uh, Cosmo is asking, Subaru being swallowed by Toyota. No, I don't think that they will be. Um, remember, Toyota still has a minority share, and Toyota is still such a big manufacturer. They have their fingers in everybody at this point. Um, it would be... I, I just don't see them really swallowing Subaru whole. And remember, GM owned the same percentage. Maybe it was a little less because I think GM was like 18% or something. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, of Subaru for a very long period of time. And they eventually went their separate ways. Okay, so catching up on comments. Yes, absolutely getting the steel cover. If I didn't get a, if they didn't offer an engine undercover, I would have called Paul over at Primitive um, um racing uh get primitive get hyphen primitive.com uh out of portland great guy he makes he's made engine underguards that i've had on pretty much every subaru i've ever owned he does a great job um free look look free advertising for you paul <laughs> um getting this all Uh, now, John, the one thing I want to say is um, the fact that I'm getting one of these, these this, this is actually a long-term press car being provided by Subaru. Um, but it is one that I actually do really like. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to like the large screen long-term. I kind of like the smaller screens, um, but it'll be interesting to see as we drive this one long-term and continue to test it if anything shows up that we're not terribly fond of. But we are only having this car for, uh, I don't know if it's six months or a year, I can't remember. Anyway, we're going to have it for a while to shoot a whole bunch of different videos on, and then we send it back. But we get to pick out what, what they're sending us, which is nice. Um, so just to recap, for those who are joining us, this is my son. I'm Ryan. I'm the host Driving Sports TV. Uh, we are configuring our Subaru Outback Onyx Edition XT because we put a poll out to all our viewers on YouTube between the Forester Sport or the Onyx XT, the two Subarus that offer dual mode X mode which one you wanted us to build for a long-term press car, and it was the Onyx XT. Moving on. Uh, we have picked out that we're going to go with blue. We're going with uh, some of the popular options. Uh, I am going to add the rear bumper cover, and the only reason for that is because loading and unloading tripods, we bang the heck out of the back of that piece, and so we need that. Uh, rear seat back protectors, same exact reason. Those get torn to shreds. Um, normally. Let me move through a co couple comments here. Worst thing about the 2020 is moving the seat heaters to the touchscreen. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Why are so many cars going touchscreens? It's not safe. You know, I think one of the reasons is, A, there's a cost issue um, long term, is that you already have this screen. It's just software. Program it in. You're good. You don't have to move buttons around. They can also push changes over the air. They theoretically could add features. Um, although I don't know if they will. Um, anyway, just it's, and you can blame Tesla. I mean, because like in my conversation with the engineers over at Subra, Subra, Subaru, 
um, when they were talking about why they went with the touchscreen, they 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 love Teslas, uh, the interior of the Tesla. So I think that that's a uh, the popularity of Tesla is really encouraging a lot of these manufacturers to go to the big screen for better or for worse. It at least seems and feels modern and futuristic, um, whether or not it's practically. Coca-Cola and tacos. I can agree with half of that, the tacos part. Um, the reason why we're not getting a Forester is because A, the, our viewers voted for the Onyx XT by a wide margin. Also, I believe the Forester will be getting a design refresh next year, uh, so or the year after that. Anyway, it's coming up, so we're doing this car this year. If this goes well, maybe we'll do the Forester next year when it is revised. Um, let's moving on. It's a manual mode. Da, 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 da. You'll end up keeping it. <laughs> Auto dimming off the with the Compass Plus. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I did pick that. I did pick the rear mirror. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to like this touchscreen long term. I, th this might drive me crazy. Okay, moving on. Uh, wheel lug set. Don't want those. Flash guards. Don't need those. Let's go to STI brand. What? What is that? Look at that. Okay, so what do you think of when you think of STI? Of course, Subaru Technica Inter International. You think of STI door handle cup protectors. That's the first thing I... Who comes up with this stuff? That's ridiculous. What? I kind of almost want to get them because they're so awful. But no, I. that's like, wow. I don't know who... Uh, why? I mean, does that look cool to you? Um, I mean, it's carbon fibery, but I'm sure it's not real carbon fiber. That is crazy, man. Oh, you got a blue onyx with nav. Cool. Uh, we're reversing only one door with tilt or both windows. Oh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, do you like this spot? Yes. I was driving a Forester recently, and... Um, I, I was really appreciating that small screen, actually. Oh, no, it wasn't the Forester. It was when I was in the Ascent, because the Ascent, uh, when I was filming the snow episode of the Ascent, if you haven't watched that, go watch it, because I think it turned out to be a decent episode. We put snow tires on an Ascent, took it up to the mountains. But um, the uh, I like the smaller screen. Anyway, uh, thoughts on Crosstrike getting a turbo? Every time I see the engineers at Subaru, like any press launch, they bring the Japanese engineers out. We talk about their vehicles, what we like, what we don't like, all that kind of stuff. So I love the fact that they actually bring engineers out. Um, and every time we say, so when is the Crosstrek going to get a turbo? And their response every single time is, do you think people would like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a little insane. Okay, so let's move on here. Fingernails. Yeah, I know fingernail scratches, but why does it have to be an STI door handle cup protector and not just... Like, why STI for that? What, what says high performance about preventing scratches behind your door handle? I love cool. I, I, does it? No. <laughs> I mean, maybe... Does it look... I mean, it looks cool yeah. to you. It does. No? No? Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. I don't want to you know, put words in your mouth. Uh, do they have a, f uh, not so far. Well, we're, we're not all the way through the list here, here yet. Cooper, uh, all terrains. Nice. Okay. Steven, I'll let you know when you can chip in. No, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, yes, I know. Click on the details for the door cup handle protector. Okay. Let's click on the details. Protects your door handle cup area. Comes in carbon fiber pattern for a stylish accent. I don't think I know any more about it now than I did before and it just looks ridiculous. I don't know. That's why does it say STI? That's I think that's the part that I get really gets me is why why that? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to get over this and move on with with the configuration. Style. I'm almost afraid to see what options we have in here. Uh, can, what do you say here? Do they still offer Outbacks with manual transmissions? No, because nobody bought them. I hate to say that. Footwell illumination kit. I actually like that because I lose stuff by my feet all the time, and I'm like getting my phone out 
unless it's my phone, in which case I'm like, where is it? Yeah, definitely getting that. Honestly, that, that should have come with this car. I think it probably comes standard on touring. Dome light LED upgrade. Why wouldn't it be LED at this point? Okay, now here's something I'm curious about. Ooh, that looks great in black, though. Doesn't that look awesome in black? Yes. Oh, I'm not going to get black. I know I like the black, but oh, that, that looks pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, the rear gate trim chrome pieces. What do you guys think of those? I mean, they serve no purpose other than being there. But I'm afraid they might be a little too pet boys. What do you think? Any thoughts on that? Oh, my goodness. What do we got? We got so many questions here. Uh, yes, why STI? No other STI stuff so far, but we're not all the way through the list. <laughs> One guy says that the, the fingernail scratches on the paint create drag, and so that's how it makes it faster. That's why it's an STI handle cup thing. That's great. Um, yes, exactly, Alan. Uh, test cream's keeping me from getting 2020. Uh, yeah, I mean it does. There is always, the twenty eighteens are are quite good. Uh, let's see. They have a setup where the Outback has a camera mounted in the grill in the front. Uh, yeah, that is. I had that on my test car, but which test car was it? Um, I can't remember. Let's see. Somebody owns that. Yeah, no Chrome, no Chrome. Okay, no Chrome. Yeah, we won't do Chrome. I wish they would delete all the Chrome. I agree with you. So uh, here's the next question. Speaking of no Chrome, do we go with the Spork Grill or do we not? I mean, it adds a little Chrome, <laughs> but those louvers are kind of cool. Uh, I think this is going to be a, 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 lot, a, a topic of much conversation. Should we get the Spork Grill or not? What do you think? Any thoughts on Spork Grill? Yeah, Onyx does have the front camera. That's what I thought. Sorry, I just I've driven so many of these. It's kind of it's easy to forget what what does what. Oh, you want to expand the image there? Okay, let's uh, expand that Spork Grill. So there's the Spork Grill. Hmm, what do you think? This this like the it. standard is more like straight louvers. This one is actually kind of looks a little Ford-like. Looks a little bit like the Mustang bit, but it has more of an accentuation on the wing pattern for the Subaru front. Oh, uh, Crazy Cool 360 is asking, what is the budget? Uh, really, there is no budget. Subaru said, go to the configurator, build a car, send them the list, and they'll send us something like that. So I don't know if we're getting all these options that we pick. Uh, we're kind of just sending it over as a list of what we would like on the car, and then they'll send us uh, what they want, I guess. No sport grill, no sport grill, no sport grill. <laughs> Everybody says no no on the sport grill. So I guess uh, that's, a, that's a no on the sport grill. Uh, how long, Michael is asking, how long are we looking to drive this? Uh, this is a long-term press car, so the typical term is one year. We haven't actually discussed with Subaru what the length is, but I'm assuming it's probably at least through the end of this year um, until we replace it with another season, with another model, possibly. Um, so let's see. But uh, what we did pitch them on, on this car specifically is we, we pitched them several um, very specific adventures involving off-roading snow and um, also testing out some very some of the, the the features specific to the dual mode x mode system uh, and because that causes risk for the vehicle i think they'd rather have us in a long-term uh, vehicle because press cars for those who don't know we, we we get all of our cars that we review from the manufacturers from what's called a press pool uh, every major city has a press pool of cars. Some are bigger than than others. L.A. is obviously the biggest one. Seattle, yeah, it's we have. I have enough cars to keep me in a car a week for the entire year for the most part. So I guess we get about 50, 60 cars here, 70 maybe tops um, every year. But what we they basically do is they they the, the press pools manage the cars for the manufacturers. But the problem with these press pools is that they have a, they, a car will come to say Seattle. It'll then go to like Tom Volk over at Driven, uh, uh, and then it'll come to me, and then it'll go to New York Times. Do you need something? 
you're, you're kind of in and out of the shot. I'm not sure. Yeah. Are you trying? I mean, that is our shot there. Anyway, the cars are cycled from one person to the next. If a car gets damaged and it even needs just like a, let's just say a wheel hub is uh, not hub, but like a small part of the car is damaged for whatever reason. If it's a delay of one or two days, uh, that means that it messes up the entire schedule. Uh, so it's kind of nice, like for this type of a vehicle, we have a little bit more flexibility in what we do with it, how long we take it. We can do more longer, more advanced adventures without worrying that we're going to mess up the schedule if we happen to have a small incident with the vehicle. Although at the end of the day, we do not want to scratch the cars. I scratched a Subaru back when I was doing Subi Sport Magazine. Um, in 2004, we did an off-road adventure with a Forester where a branch, I still remember that branch scraping along the paint. Subaru Corporate still brings that up with me. They're still not happy about that. So, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> that was before you were born. <laughs> that was before your sister was born. Five years before. Yeah. Okay, so we're catching up on this no spork grill. So we're definitely not doing the spork grill. Uh, don't forget, no start stop. Yeah, the no start stop is it's hidden on the menu. Uh, oh, wait. Are you saying that the, I can disable start stop in the configuration of the vehicle, or you're just talking about menus on the car's tablet display? Uh, AC, let me know what, what your thoughts are on that. Let's go through the questions here. No chrome. Uh, not doing touring because it doesn't have dual range X mode. And use that Chrome delete. Uh, wish they had a Chrome delete. Uh, won't be buying another Subaru. Oh, not happy after your 2017 Forester. Uh, that's too bad. Uh, did something break on it? I know they had some issues with this. Oh, there we go. Had to replace the windshield. Oof. Yeah, once this refreshes, I'll show. You. There we go. So, uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind is that the safety systems definitely cause windshield prices to go up. Also, in the first couple of years of a, of a car, typically it's fairly expensive. Anyway, let, let me uh, continue on with the configuration here. Uh, I'm not going to get the, the, the sport grill because I think that actually looks pretty good just as it is. Lifestyle. Oh, heaven. What do we have here? Uh, well, I'm not going to add a bike rack because I can contact Thule directly for one of those. I don't. We don't need to get those are accessories we don't really need. Nope, 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 nope. Trailer hitch. Oh, I'm not sure what we would hitch. Do we even have a trailer? No, we don't have a trailer. Yep. Okay, so still moving along. Oh, I got a lot of stuff that I had before that's still in the lifestyle things here. Wait, that just seems to be duplicate again. Oh, and then now it's all. Okay. So this is our configuration. Hey, we kept it under 40 grand. <laughs> uh, let's see with some of the comments. If you turn off your rear defroster, it disables auto start stop. That is interesting. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm aware of. Make sure they get 2.5 non-turbo if going off-road. Uh, we are getting the turbo, though, because we want dual-range X mode. That's what we asked for. And, again, it's a long-term press car. It's going back to Subaru when we've had our way with it. I mean, when we're done with it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, no, I know the story about TFL and Subaru. It wasn't just the scratch. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, brake upgrades. Nope. Yes to the hitch. You think I should get the hitch? I mean, I, I could, for sake of testing, I guess, towing something might not be a bad thing. Why, why get the hitch now? I guess just it's good to have. Let's go ahead and throw the hitch on there. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the Subaru and TFL thing, but um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, add a class three later. Yeah, possibly. Can you test trailing something? Oh, yeah. Actually, it's a good idea. We should do that. Is there different wheels? Uh, no. The Onyx only comes with the blacked out wheels that you see here. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go with the hitch. And that's... Oh, the hitch put us over 40 grand. Oh. Oh, well. Now, the question here is how do I possibly... 
Uh, oh, there you go. Save build. So I save it. I copy it. There we go. And then I send it off to Subaru Corporate. And there we go. We have now configured our Onyx Edition. Are we sure we want to go with the, the blue? I, I, I like the blue. I think I like the blue. The blue is good. The blue will be good because nobody drives, nobody drives blue Outbacks. Um, uh, okay, so here's the thing about the, the, the factory hitch only being a one and a quarter hitch. I mean, what's the towing capacity? I, I, it slips my mind what it is right now, but it's not a lot on these things. I don't think I would ever trailer anything like bigger than, you know, than a one and a quarter could handle. I, am I wrong here? I mean, we haven't done a lot of trailering on the show, but I mean, if I get something with a hitch, I'll definitely do some more um, so we can learn more as we go. Yeah, that's a good point for the hitch there. Hmm. Ooh, a stealth hitch install. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is there's certain modifications we can't make to the vehicle, uh, and I don't know if a stealth hitch would, does if that requires cutting the bumper or anything, that might be something that we can't add um, because we do have some limitations on what we can do to this since it is actually owned by Subaru uh oh it is 3500 pounds okay oh that's interesting so it's the same towing capacity as the trd uh rav4 uh, the trd off-road also does 3400 pounds um, although this motor is, is much more of um much more butch so i think that that's it that's our configurations i'd like to thank everybody for joining us oh and if you didn't notice look look what we have back here boom right there that's our hundred thousand subscriber plaque that's also why i rearranged the office here and um on the upcoming episode that we have uh coming out hopefully on tuesday i am traveling to go drive the camry all-wheel drive um tomorrow morning i'm taking off for um somewhere I, I i don't even know where i'm going but i'm getting on an airplane tomorrow and i'll be driving the new camry all-wheel drive in the snow we'll be filming that i don't know what the embargo date is so i'm not sure if it's coming up the following Tuesday or sooner. Um, I just know that this coming Tuesday, we have the RAV4 TRD Off-Road where you guys will meet uh, a co-driver that I brought out for the very first time, Carlina. Um, so yeah, we're kind of expanding the show a little bit and uh, hopefully you guys like it. Um, and uh, there we go. Oh, the stealth hitch doesn't require a bumper cut. That's good to know. I'll have to look into that. We'll... Uh, I don't know if they're going to give me one with a hitch anyway. I mean, honestly, this is just a suggested list to them. Um, but it is something that I thank you guys for helping me build because this is a, th there's a lot of options and a lot to consider when you're coming up with a new car build. And uh, I think this looks pretty cool. I, I kind of like this. So, again, uh, Driving Sports TV, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll uh, catch you again here later. I'm going to be traveling. Um, did you leave me any cookies? Yeah. No, he ate all the cookies. So I guess I talked too long because I ran out of cookies. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you later.